dark page in the annals of America has been written to the crack of an assassin's bullet. A nation mourns, the world grieves. The man who became 35th president less than three years ago is dead. He led his country boldly through the treacherous shoals of Cold War, treacherous shoals of Cold War crises. His firm commitments to support the cause of democracy throughout the world won him acclaim almost unprecedented in the history of the presidency. He faced up to communist threats with such firm shows of force that Khrushchev backed down in Cuba, softened the hard red line on Berlin. He brought to the White House the vigor of youth and a family that captivated the hearts of all. No possible shadow loomed over this last group picture of his family, John and Jacqueline, John John and Caroline. Death has closed the cover in album portraits like this. His rendezvous with grim destiny begins a little after noontime as his plane lands in Dallas. Earlier, he had received a tumultuous reception in Fort Worth. And now, more thousands are waiting to greet him in downtown Dallas. But death is less than one short hour away. At 125, the motorcade moves into the downtown area. Death is six minutes away. In a warehouse, a sniper with a rifle poised waits. The cheers of the crowd almost muffle the three shots. The assassin's aim is deadly. The area is a swarm with police, rangers, and secret service men. The murderer slips the net, but a few blocks away, a man is captured after he is reported to have killed a policeman. That man is a 24-year-old pro-Castro Texan who once sought Soviet citizenship. He is charged with murder. Meanwhile, the president had been rushed to a nearby hospital where life lingered as a waiting world prayed. A half hour later, he was dead, his life crushed like his wife's abandoned bouquet. A shocked nation weeps. Across the country, around the world, Disbelief was the first reaction, then a great outpouring of grief, shock, and revulsion. A proud banner is lowered. The empty White House is a symbol of this infamous mockery of American ideals of peace and freedom. Peoples of all faiths unite in prayer for the first Catholic to become president. The United Nations General Assembly joins in a minute of silent tribute, tribute to the man who fought so hard and valiantly for the ideals of this international body. The Iron Curtain was dissolved in the sincerity of their sorrow. <laughs>